Hello and welcome back to 4FS Gaming. This video is about quick play in Hunt Showdown. I will talk you through the mechanics of the game mode and I'll also discuss some tactics to help you come out on top. If you just want to skip straight to the tactics because you know all of the mechanics, well, I'm going to put a timestamp on the screen now. So firstly, if Bounty Hunt is the true Hunt Showdown experience, why even play quick play? Well, the matches are capped at 15 minutes in length, so it's great for when you want to play Hunt, but also don't have a whole heap of time in your play session. Quick play is all for solos as well, so if you think that it's unfair that a solo has to fight against duos and trios in the Bounty Hunt mode, well then you won't have that problem in quick play. Finally, this game mode is very low risk. You never wager a hunter and their gear to jump into a quick play match, but you will almost always walk away with some cash, or even a fully geared up hunter if you win with a whole heap of trait points to spare. I like to use quick play to warm up, or while waiting for my partner to finish whatever they're doing and jump on, or even to get my hands on some better gear after I've prestiged. There's nothing better than a tier 1 rank 3 aftermat, of course. So in a quick play match, as of 1.0's full release, you will be in a lobby with 11 other hunters. The aim is to go around to different compounds and activate rifts, which are very similar to clues. They will glow red if other hunters are nearby, and each rift you activate will grant your hunter a trait. As you collect these rifts, the map will black out, draw in surviving players towards a small handful of compounds. As you move through the map, you will find all kinds of gear to pick up as well to give you an edge. Now that timer in the upper left hand corner of the screen shows how much wellspring energy is left. When it hits zero, the game will always end. It ticks down at the rate of one point every two seconds. When the game ends, if you are not carrying the wellspring, that's it, you're dead. The first player to activate four rifts will get this wellspring, and that's when the game changes completely. When carrying the wellspring, that player's movement is restricted so that they can only travel a certain distance away from the compound that they activated their last rift in. This will appear on their map as a red circle. All of the other players will not see this barrier, and they can still travel anywhere they like. Also, all of the other players will be able to see the Wellspring Carrier in Darkseid, with both the traditional lightning above the carrier, but also with the orange wisp, much like a reverse Darkseid boost. This wisp is less accurate at showing position, and it moves around a lot, but the closer you get to it, the less it moves and the more accurate it becomes, until at about 15 meters or so, you can more or less pinpoint the position of the Wellspring Holder within a building. For the Wellspring Holder, the objective is to survive until the energy in the timer transfers fully over to them, and the countdown hits zero and the game ends. They can speed up this process by killing other hunters, as each hunter they kill will reduce the Wellspring timer by 25 instantly. If they do die, then they will keep any Wellspring energy they already transferred to them, and it'll be paid out in XP and money at the end of the match. Now if they survive, they will also be able to recruit that hunter into their roster when back in the menus, including all of the gear and traits that they had equipped at the end of the game. If the Wellspring Holder is the last hunter standing, then the time will drop straight to 15 seconds and you'll have a few moments there to gather some gear or set yourself up before finishing. For everyone else, once that Wellspring is activated, they are now on the clock to kill the Wellspring Holder, steal the Wellspring, and if they succeed, they will become the new Wellspring Holder. They will have their health instantly refreshed upon acquiring the Wellspring, then they must survive. If they fail to attain the Wellspring before the timer runs out, they will burn up and die as the game ends. There are no extractions in Quick Play, and only one hunter can leave alive. So what are some tactics that will help you win in Quick Play? Well, the first thing that you need to know is that even though every other hunter on the map can see your position, it is a huge advantage to activate the Wellspring first. Not only do you immediately start racking up points for every moment you hold it, but you are also then able to dictate the terms of engagement. So these tactics really come in three different stages. The first is how to get to the Wellspring quickly, the second is how to defend it, and then we'll talk about how to steal it from others. This starts from the character select screen. Take a skin that makes for good camouflage, remember that no quick play matches occur at night, and then choose your starting gear. I usually go with melee as this allows you to move through the initial compound you spawn at very quickly and quietly. Now of course, stealth is less important than speed in quick play. Do not spend ages avoiding sound traps if you need to get past something by shooting it, just do it and keep on running, because the priority is getting that wellspring. 
Of course, making too much noise means that you're going to get into entanglements with other hunters early on, and that can also slow you down. So there is a balance, but I would prioritize speed, and going melee allows you to do that pretty easily. Picking melee might also give you a disadvantage if you run into another player immediately after spawn, especially if they have a shotgun, but given the new spawn system in 1.0, this is pretty unlikely, and it will only happen to less than 25% of players each match. So as you progress quickly across the map, what kind of equipment are you looking for? Well, I like to tick a few boxes. Something that allows you to quickly clear AI so you can keep moving fast is a must for me. This could be a melee weapon, a silent weapon, or even a windfield with lots of ammo, that'll do the trick. Healing is also a great addition to the loadout, preferably in the form of a medkit, because you want to save that consumable slot for some sweet explosives. Then of course you're going to want a power weapon, something that you are comfortable using to kill other players if you encounter them. The stronger the better. A decent rifle like the Mosin, a Dolch, any of these will do the trick. Also keep an eye using the map menu on the traits that your hunter is picking up as you go and tailor your loadout to suit these if possible. You may prefer a Bornheim to a chain pistol, but if you find that your hunter has fanning, then it's really a no-brainer. You need that chain pistol. If you find a resupply point and they're not marked on the map until you just happen across one, they're usually full of high tier gear, so they're always worth checking out as well. Another thing to note about gear is that you can always pick up more consumables, so don't be afraid to use them. If you see a stamina or an antidote shot, just pick it up, use it, and then pick back up the frag bomb that you swapped out initially. As you move, it's good to have an idea of where other players might be as well. By using the way that the map folds down as you pick up your rifts, and the sounds that you hear around you as clues, you can predict player movement exactly with the same way as Bounty Hunt. I made a video on that called Predicting Player Movement, which might come in handy when you're done here. So let's say that you get your last rift, and now you have the wellspring. You now have some decisions to make. You can run around the limited area in circles, staying ahead of the competition, or hole up in some cover, and essentially camp while letting enemies come to you. Now I recommend the compound defense strategy, which is a nice way of saying camping. You'll likely have a few moments to put down traps, use Constantina bombs, and find a good spot. Your biggest worry when doing this is getting blown up by dynamite if people estimate your position, so always have an escape plan in mind if you hear a fuse light up. Of course, if you get your hands on a shotgun, you can stay inside your little bunker and wait for people to try and breach, killing them as they do so. If you have a longer range weapon, you might have to be a bit more aggressive, reacting to noise on the outside to peek and engage before they get too close. You do not want to be camping in a corner with a carabiner when someone rounds with a Coldwell rival. Let's flip you over to the other side now, and say that you have a limited amount of time to push the wellspring holder before the game ends. The first thing that you have to do is identify if they are running or camping. If they're running around, don't follow them directly, you'll need to cut them off, and remember they only have a limited amount of space to manoeuvre. If you've got a rifle, it's usually quite easy to kill someone that's running around without cover. Now if they're camping, it's a bit of a different story. You need to pinpoint exactly where in the compound they are. The closer you get, the more you will be able to accurately use Darksight to locate them, down to the exact room or corner that they're in. At this point, assume the worst is that they have a shotgun, and hope that you have followed my advice and picked up an explosive, because now is the now failing that you can always try and wallbang them, and if you really must walk inside right up to them, watch for traps and keep your balls of steel, because once inside at that range, anyone could come out on top. Now if you have a shotgun or a dolch yourself, you do have a pretty good chance of killing them. And if you succeed, the wellspring is yours, so you are now the defender. So before we finish up, is there any weapon that I particularly recommend? Now I'm a real fan of anything with a bayonet. The Spectre Bayonet isn't the best shotgun, but it allows you to very quickly dispatch AI. And when you get that Wellspring, you can always hold indoor corners with it straight away, unless you find something better, like a Crowning King. The Mosin and Carabina are also really strong weapons with their bayonets for similar reasons, but they require a lot more aggressive play when defending the Wellspring, because you don't want enemies to get too close. Your bayonet will rarely win against a Coldwell Rival or Dolch. Also, in Hunt Showdown you can actually carry three weapons. If you pick two weapons that you like and then find an axe or hammer lying around on the ground, it effectively gives you a one-shot melee weapon and you can destroy most AI with it really quickly. So use your axes, use your hammers, and also lanterns that you find around. 
Hopefully this guide is helpful, and if you liked it, please consider subscribing. We also have a Discord server and Patreon page linked in the description below for those who would like to connect further with the 4FS community. Thank you so much for watching, and good luck out in the swamps.